How's it going Star Seekers? I hope you're all doing well and keeping safe and welcome back to the channel for another SOS review. Now today we're going to be taking a look at one of the weirdest games I've ever played on the Nintendo Switch. You may remember a few months back I covered a game called Paratopic on the channel and that game was both creepy and weird but for Toon Batula dials the surreal factor up to 11. Just like Paratopic, the game sucked me right in with its OG PlayStation inspired visuals and just the overall strangeness of its eShop gallery images. And let me tell you now, they really do the game justice because I'm not quite sure what I just played through but hopefully this review can shed some light on this oddball of a game. So cage that chimpanzee, put on the deep fat fryer and let's get started. So for Toon Batula kicks things off with an epilepsy warning, which is not always a good sign for those affected by flashy lights. Luckily the game has you covered though, as there's a toggle in the options menu which lets you enable epilepsy friendly visuals. Prior to starting the game we're faced with a strange little title menu which translates the game's title from Latin into English. For Toon Batula literally means Fate Birch, which is actually rather fitting once you understand the gameplay loop. Now upon beginning the game, we get dropped into this temple looking structure without any sort of introduction. At the top of the steps we find a room containing a walkway with water running either side of it and a single sapling floating in the centre of it with its roots dangling down into the water below. Fatoon Batula is an exploration puzzle game and this intro section clarifies this by leaving you to work out exactly how to get started in the game. It took me about 10 minutes to work this out as I searched for hidden objects or secret doors but I eventually came face to face with this horror who tossed me three glass vials, told me that I had to feed the tree to make it grow and sent me on my way. Now after heading out of the temple, you're then on your own and free to explore the surrounding areas in search of some kind of plant food but you aren't looking for your standard bag of easy grow, that would be far too normal for this game, no. In Fatoon Batula you'll find many different kinds of things to store in your little vials and feeding each of these to the tree by pouring them into its water supply will result in a different ending to the game. There are 10 endings in total to the game ranging from the philosophical to the utterly bizarre and each time you complete an ending you'll then have to start the game over but you're able to save your game in one of 4 save slots which does cut down the amount of times you'll have to replay sections to see all of the endings. Now actually finding the materials required to see every ending is where things get a little tricky. Although there aren't a huge number of areas for you to explore in Fatoon Batula, you really do need to be observant of your surroundings and think outside the box sometimes, which is partly due to the PlayStation inspired low poly visuals and low resolution textures. There are times when playing that I found things blended in together at a distance and the draw distance wasn't great, but this forced me to search every nook and cranny for which I was usually rewarded with an item or clue directing me towards the next ending. Now as well as actually searching for and finding the items and clues, you also need to work out where and when to use them which often requires a little bit of trial and error. Using the wrong item at the wrong time could result in you being locked out from one of the endings for your current run so it's usually a good idea to save your game before making any big decisions. Throughout the game you'll encounter many different characters, each one creepier than the last and these characters are usually seeking a specific item or wanting you to do something for them. Completing the task sometimes rewards you with one of the materials to fill your vial, opening the way to another ending but they can also give you items which you must once again seek a purpose for. Now I can't really get into the game in any more depth without heading into spoiler territory but I will say that I had a good time playing for Toon Batula and while finding the first few endings is pretty easy, working out how to unlock them all is actually quite challenging. You're going to need to experiment by using different items on different characters and I advise that you keep your eyes peeled for things which aren't immediately obvious. As I said before, the order in which you do things also really matters because you can get locked out of certain endings but luckily even if you totally screw up and have to start over, getting back to where you were doesn't take a long time and even unlocking the most complex ending will only take you around 10 or 15 minutes. So overall I really enjoyed my time playing for Toon Batula. 
as with Paratopic, I love the surreality of the game and in some ways I'd actually say that I enjoyed it more than Paratopic. I liked the more open, less linear approach, enjoyed the puzzle solving aspects and I thought the shorter playtime and save system made it more accessible for repeat playthroughs. When it comes to visuals, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I'm a big fan of the 32-bit visuals and I hope we see more games adopting this style, just like the past few years have seen a huge influx of games using the 8 and 16-bit visuals. All your wise, things are kept to a minimum in the game. We get some basic sound effects here and there, but nothing special. And when it comes to music tracks, we get a spot of calming music in a couple of areas and some creepy-ass music in whatever this place is. In all, I'd highly recommend giving Fatoon Batula a go, especially if A, you've played Paratopic and are wanting to step things up a notch, or B, like me, you just like creepy and surreal shit in general. When it comes to my own personal rating of the game, I'm going to be giving Fatoon Batula 5 out of 5 stars. The devs did a great job with this one. It's got atmosphere, intrigue, exploration and a decent amount of puzzle solving and I'm really looking forward to playing the next creepy little gem that publisher Baltoro Games throw our way. You can get Fatoon Batula from the UK Switch eShop where it's usually priced at £4.99 or from the US eShop for $5.49. Alternatively, the game's also available on Steam. And that's about it for this review of Fatoon Batula on the Nintendo Switch. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed it and it helped you out. Let me know your thoughts about the game and the review in the comments section below. And while you're at it, why not go ahead and subscribe to the channel as I upload new Nintendo Switch reviews and content every few days. For now though, I just want to thank you all once again for watching. And until next time, take care of yourselves and game on.